third eye idea of recognizing infinite worth, recognizing that you are an infinite creature. And then when that opens up, it opens up to everything else, a universal connection, but it allows you to recognize that same oneness in other, pe in other people, in other beings. And that's when, if that's reciprocated, if both are at that stage of clarity, that is what I meant with it's quite rare. When do we reach that point? Well, we can very, very clearly measure that in ourselves by simply right now taking a deep breath, closing your eyes, and asking yourself, how worthy and amazing do I feel I am? And at the level where that stops, you start to be a little excited, a little excited, and then it stops. That's the level you're working at. And you just keep expanding that boundary. Keep expanding how worthy you feel, how ecstatic you feel, how true you feel, how much you feel like you are a creature of infinite worth. And you keep expanding that energy. It becomes more and more blissful, more and more bright, brighter light, brighter, brighter, more and more expansive. And then at some point you feel a little, a little contraction, a little belief comes up. Well, this is too much bliss for me to be worthy of. This is too much light for me to handle. And that's exactly what it is. It's too much light for you to handle. That's exactly what it is, because that's what you're saying to the universe, because that's what you're believing about yourself. So right there you reach another plateau, another threshold, another layer of beliefs, and usually you will find that it has something to do with being afraid of fully expressing yourself, fully being yourself, fearing the consequences of other people and all that stuff. So open up that throat chakra in that sense. Bring that light even higher, even brighter. And realize that you are entitled to express yourself as fully as you want to by the very nature, by the very fact that you exist. Existence wants your voice heard, expressed. Your desires manifest. Otherwise it wouldn't give you desires. Otherwise it wouldn't have created you to begin with. You are infinite worth. Your existence is meant to exist, otherwise you would not exist. Because consciousness, God, does not make mistakes. It does not create redundancy. You are not redundant. You are infinite worth. You are infinite expression. And you are meant to be yourself with zero reference to what other people think of you. So brighten up that light. Feel that infinite love, that infinite self-worth. Increase and increase and let the bliss pour down into your body, into your being. And know that you are infinite worth and let nothing else matter anymore. No one else matters. No one else matters but you. Give yourself that gift for a moment. I'm not saying you become a dick. I'm just saying that you become absolutely clear on who you are and that you're worthy for your own free will to be free. If you don't let your free will be free, then you're not going to let other people's free will be free and you're simply not ready for relationship. Not this type of relationship. So you got to let your free will be free so that you can have the empowerment and the infinite worth found inside of you an expression, infinite expression found inside of you, free expression, so that when you are in that empowered state of being, when you are that God in a body, with a body, I should say, then, then you can fully attract that type of relating, that type of relationship, naturally, effortlessly. Then you are ready for that light. Then you won't squeeze it when it's given to you. Then you will let it come and go so that the next even more beautiful, abundant thing can come and go as well. So when are you ready? You will know that you're ready. A, when it happens, obviously, but even before it happens, you can know that you're ready by no longer needing the projections external to you, outside of yourself. When you can feel infinite love and worth and happiness just by being you, just by being crazy, just by being absolutely you, just being so satisfied with being you, just feeling so amazing about yourself, feeling that you are a creature of infinite light, of infinite worth. When you feel that, you start to operate as an infinite being, as an eternal vibrational consciousness. And then, sky's the limit, or the beginning. And then, relationships start to open up as well. All kinds of relationships, all kinds of dynamics, all kinds of purposes behind it, that you then start to be able to become a part of, in a sense. Fulfill a role in and it's beautiful, and you're going to be of service in many ways. You're going to benefit a lot of yourself out there, precisely because you increase your light so much that you don't need anything from anyone. That you can start to actually give and act according to what is most required or necessary or asked for. You'll be in love with yourself, with your own source. You'll be so excited that you exist, that that's really all you need. And not in a pitiful sort of like, cheesy way. Like, no, I am all I need. I don't need anyone else. In a true way, like you're actually ecstatic about being alive. 
you're actually excited that you are who you are and you wouldn't change that for the world. You wouldn't exchange that for anything, for anyone. Your connection to Source is the only life-giving essence in your life. You know that you can't actually get energy from anyone else. You can only get it from the degree of alignment you have with yourself, the degree of free will that you allow yourself to have in every moment. That's where you get the light from. That's where you get the energy from, the sustenance. That's what sustains you. That's what empowers you. That's what creates your reality. So remember that you are a being of infinite light. That is when you will be ready. That is when we'll see it more and more and more in our society. More and more reflected in us. Don't be harsh on yourself when human stuff comes up. Simply note that they are lack beliefs. And move through it as graciously as you can. Sometimes that simply looks messy. That's okay. That's quite all right. Feelings can sometimes be hard to interpret because we've learned to interpret them in hard ways. So allow yourself to go through those periods of, in a sense, purging those old beliefs, transforming them, showing them that you now know that you are of a higher vibratory state of alignment of infinite worth. And then they leave you alone. They disappear. They become merged back into your being. There's so much room in yourself that you can include them even. But they'll just be outshone by the light that you are, by the confidence that you are. And then you keep moving on, moving on, moving on, expanding, expanding, creating more and more delicious realities for yourself. To the point where if you think back two weeks ago, it seems depressing to you. You don't want to live a single day in your life already lived because you move on every single minute. And you're so much happier with what you have now, with what you've created now, with the reflection that you see now. And then the question of moving on or not moving on starts to become more irrelevant. The idea of growing apart no longer seems like a negative thing. It seems like the most sensical thing in the world. Two beings are never meant to be together forever, unless they really are, but it's rare. It's pretended by way too many of us that that's the way creation works. It's really not in most cases. If you doubt, in general, I would say, consider moving on. Because it's contradicting what you believe, which can somehow inhibit or cloud your vision of what's true, sometimes. Do as resonates, do what resonates. But aim for freedom, aim for love. Let your free will be free and let their free will be free. That's the way to love each other, to honor the universe. Every connection is sacred. Every connection is sacred. Most of all yours with your own. If you make that one really, really strong, then you can let yourself have that true connection with yourself and other people. And you can let those other people more and more have those connections with themselves and with other people. Recognize that ultimately you would not want to detract from that person relating to someone else because you're detracting from more of yourself. It doesn't mean anything if someone else goes with someone else. So hard, isn't it, to believe that? But it's not. Not when you reach higher levels of light and brightness. When you're in your really clear moments, you feel so on top of the world that anything can be stolen from you and you wouldn't even flinch. You'd be absolutely ecstatic at everything being taken away from you because it's all the same abundance. And you are a creature of infinite possibility. So why be afraid when point zero 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 Honestly, I'm not just seeing the whole number and I can't speak it in the next 800 billion years. If I would continue to say zero, 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 it would still not be there. One, let's just skip 800 billion years. <laughs> Percent of all of creation is taken away from you. You would not care. It still exists. You just move on to another portion of it. You own all of creation. You own infinite possibilities. So don't latch on to what you see, because what you see is a reflection of who you were. Of course it needs to move, so that something new can be created and your new vibratory state can be reflected in physical reality. If you hold on to it too tightly, A, it will wither and die, you will wither and die, and your new reality won't come to fruition. And when the reality you do have thus finally gets stolen away from you, you don't know what to do with yourself. So allow yourself to recreate yourself on all levels of your being, especially the manifest level, over and over and over and over and over again. 